It's Adam from the Gamers Hall, and I am starting a new series uh, called Pack Tactics. And this one is to help you understand that the creatures are more than what's written on that page. I'm going to go through a few things of like psychology and maybe some um, tactical things they'll use uh, in combat and especially out of combat because a creature is more than what they'll just do in combat. And maybe give you a little bit better understanding of at least how I perceive them and or, you know, classically how the rest of the genre perceives them. So we're going to talk about kobolds first. They are the scariest monsters, at least one of the scariest monsters in all of D&D. Here's why. One of the things that they understand, they're the weakest. Kobolds know this innately. They, they completely accept that they are one of the weakest creatures out there. They've done something to tip the scales for them. Trap making. These creatures are like the savants of traps. They're like the Kevin McAllisters. This is it. Don't get scared now. The Rambos. The Jigsaws of trap making for the D&D universe. Hello. You don't know me, but I know you. I want to play a game. And that makes them really scary. One of the things that makes their traps so dangerous is the fact that kobolds are constantly underestimated. Knowing that they're weakest, everybody else also believes they're the weakest. So when they see a kobold, they're just, oh, this is just a tiny, small creature. It doesn't really matter that much. But that's where they got you. Because now they can get you into any of their traps. Physical traps, which they're willing to take a whole mountainside down if it just takes out one adventuring party. That's not a problem. And their traps are more than just physical traps like blowguns, murder holes, pitfalls. They also use traps like bigger creatures. They'll get a dragon to be their protector. And this works out perfectly in their favor because you might come for them, but now they just get their big old dragon friend to come attack you for trying to attack them. And they'll find things like ogres and trick, you know, something that's objectively stupider than they are to be their dummy to get caught. Also, Cobalt is willing to sacrifice themselves to protect their own clutches, to protect their own people. So anything to a Cobalt is a trap. And they're willing to lead you into that trap to make sure that you don't survive, or at least you're not coming back for more. That's what makes Cobalt very unique. They are dangerous on a whole different level. They don't have to fight you one-on-one, -on -one, although they do have pack tactics. You know, they get the advantage if they got a friend nearby, but they are willing to protect themselves. They are willing to cooperate and work in a unified group for the greater good of themselves. They don't care about you very much, but for themselves they care a lot. And even on that point, they will even, when they get so big, so many of them, they'll actually intentionally break their own clutches apart, and half of them will go somewhere else so they don't, so other creatures don't think they're a threat. Because they want to stay underestimated. They want to keep everybody out there believing that they're not that big of a deal. But they are. They really are. And if you underestimate a kobold next time you see it, you might be the one falling for their trap. 